Okay, so this is part nine of our Facing Adversity series, part nine. Uh, and the special for tonight is six tips to avoid anxiety. Six tips. And I ask you that don't jump off of this show halfway through because you're going to say, oh, I don't want to hear anymore. When is he going to get to the six tips? I'm going to get to the six tips about three quarters of the way through. So you got to bear with me because they're important, very important, okay? If you're going to make it, if I'm going to make it, if we're going to make it, okay? Anyway, this series called Facing Adversity and Becoming a victor at the same or same time, or facing ad adversity as a victor. Uh, we've been talking about it for many weeks now. There are two ways to lose in life. You know, we all face things that are going to be negative. They're not going to go our way. We're going to be upset with them. You can walk away angry, throwing things, a loser, feeling insulted, your pride hurt, just mad at everyone, every person, or you can walk away as a loser, but with virtue. Pulling away out of the hands of the enemy, wisdom. So you do not make that mistake again. Again, you can walk away as a loser one way, or you can walk away as a loser the other way. One way, you're a double loser, okay? Okay, L for loser, remember that song? We used to do that sign, L for loser. Or you could lose with a V, losing with victory and saying, you know what, I certainly learned something. It wasn't a total loss because I walked away smarter than when I came in. Okay, so that's what we've been talking about. But tonight, tonight, okay, how are we doing here? Quarter after here. Okay, tonight, six tips to avoid anxiety. Now, by a show of hands, let's be honest now, uh, how many people out there are a little bit nervous about life, what's going on in the world, uh, nervous about your health, nervous about a loved one, anyone out there? Okay, I'll put my hand up. Okay, put my hand up. Sally put her hand up. Okay, we're all putting our hands up. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, tonight we're going to deal with another monster of monsters, which is a fact, people. People, we're freaking out. We're getting scared to death. Everywhere we look, the news is dreadful. We're at our wit's end. Why? Why are we at our wit's end? Because the world is so darn scary. And it seems like, you know, we're being good sheep, we're doing what we're told and saying, if you do this, everything will be well, but we're doing it and it's not well. Matter of fact, it's getting worse. People, we are facing monsters this year, big monsters. Uh, the president had, I don't know if you guys get a chance to see his Christmas message was, uh, expect this year sickness and death. That's, that's what he said. Sickness and death will be this winter, okay? Uh, so that's a pretty sc scary prospect. Sickness and death, wow. Now, whether we're going to die or not this year, we don't know, God does, but it sure is, it sure is scary. But I could promise you guys one thing. You know what the fact is? And I'm gonna, you know, I tell you guys like it is. I guarantee you by the time 2022 is over, there'll be people who have died in the United States from many things. People will die in car accidents. People will die of cancer. People will die, I'm sure, of COVID. People will die of many things. So I'm not denying that, okay? We're gonna die. People are going to die. Uh, there's no one who can tell us that you know there will be no death from this point on. That's just impossible. God even says there will be death. What you do with that is up to you. Okay. So, what do we do with all of this doom and and despair? Well, we can say, and I and I really want to you guys to really think about this because people are going. This is the worst 
Christmas ever. You know, I thought 2020 was bad and 2021 is even worse and 2022 is even worse. We've never faced such horrible times. That's a lie. I was, uh, I was watching a special on World War I. I saw a picture of Christmas Eve, World War I. I forgot what year it was. The guys were in a muddy, wet foxhole with bombs blowing up all over the place huddled together, rags on their feet. That's a bad year. World War I, that was a bad time. World War II, that was some bad times. People lost everything. They lost loved ones. They lost their towns. The Jews were going to gas chambers. Okay, that was a pretty bad, how, how long? Uh, World War I, I think it was 1938 to 45, I think that's how long it went. A lot of bad Christmases, people. That's real pain and sorrow. And how about the people in Kentucky right now? Whatever you're going through out there, okay, if you're, if you're from Kentucky, my friend Frank out there, uh, our prayers go out to you guys. Matter of fact, our church, little church here, we're trying to get some money together to send out to them in uh, Kentucky. Uh, they're not going to have a good Christmas, okay? And it's not going to be COVID that's going to do it. It's going to be complete devastation of everything they've ever owned. So... There's some hard times out there. And right now, if you're feeling okay and you're home with a roof over your head, that's a blessing. That's a blessing, okay? So let's get to the big question because there's a big but. Okay, Bezos Scott, I get it, okay? I get it. Things could be worse, but I'm really scared. I'm really freaking out. Every day I'm up and I'm down and I don't know how to make it. And the question is, is it possible to go through such times as we're going without fear? Can you do it without fear? Well, God says, yes, okay? But I'm gonna be a little bit more specific, okay? You can do it without anxiety, okay? Now, I'm going to do a little play on words here, but I'm going to teach you guys something that you need to understand because anxiety and fear are not the same thing. And there probably will be fearful things. There always will be. But anxiety is something that should not be a part of our lives. Hey, Scott, good to see you tonight out there. A uh, couple other people out there. Welcome aboard. You see, God says that we should not have anxiety, okay? In Romans 8.31, why does he say this? He says, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who could be against us? He that spared his own son, but delivered him up, who spared not his own son, but delivered him up for them, often, ah, my tongue is tied, but delivered him up for us all. It's King James does that to you. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Psalm 4, 8, I will both lay me down in peace and sleep for thou, Lord, only makest me to dwell in safety. But you can honestly say, and I'm, and I'm going to play the devil's advocate over and over again tonight. You can say, yeah, but, but yeah, that's just God's word. How does that help me? Because there is fear all around me. Well, let's read 2 Timothy 1.7. Bible says, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And I've shared that with you guys many times. That is a very important verse to me. I had it uh, taped to the dashboard of my old truck years ago when I was going through great depression, massive anxiety, crippling clinical anxiety, barely able to make it each day. That scripture got me through. But... The truth is, people, I can give you scriptures all night long, but what we really need is to know what to do, right? I think sometimes Bible teachers and us as pastors, you know, we throw out scriptures and say, this is what God says, 
but we don't know how to apply it. Okay, yeah, I know things all work together for good. Yeah, I get it. But what does that mean to me when I'm afraid, when I have anxiety? Stop throwing scriptures at me. Okay, show me steps. Give me tangible things to do. This is true. When I was going through really bad anxiety and depression and, you know, people were sending me scriptures and little plaques with, God is good things and read this. You need to read this, God. You need to read that. It's like, I don't want to hear it anymore. I don't want to read any more Bible verses. I don't want to get any more quotes from everybody trying to cheer me up. It didn't do anything, okay? There was a period where it didn't do anything. I was so far down. People, we need steps. And in, in order to avoid anxiety, we need to understand fear and what the difference is. So, tonight, what is, okay, somebody's saying something here, I don't know what that is. Tonight, what is anxiety, really, and is it the same thing as fear? Is anxiety and fear the same? No, they're not. They're actually not. Listen to me, I'm going to give you some examples here. Fear. What is fear? Fear is actually something good that God has given you. Example. Because, well, before I give you the example, let me give you the definition of fear. Fear is to be rationally concerned by an actual, present, and immediate danger. Okay? to be rationally concerned about an actual, present, immediate concern or danger. Example, and I use this one a lot when I'm counseling people. You know, right now we're in this building. You know, when I'm walking on a roof of a building, like sometimes I go up on the church roof and I have to fix things. When I walk up there, I have a fear of falling. Do you know where that fear of falling came from? Came from God. What's that fear there to do? To help us want to live. Fear directs all of our systems to be engaged because when I'm walking on a roof, I don't dance up there, people. I walk very carefully. I check each step, make sure there's no ice up there. Fear of dying, okay, or getting really hurt is something that God placed in there to help us to keep staying alive. So fear like that is not bad, it is good. Okay? Because there is an actual current threat. It's, you know, they, they, talk, they talk about it in psychological terms, the fight or flight threat. Okay? The fight or flight thing. That our bodies are designed like when you are walking down a dark alley and somebody jumps out to mug you or something, in case you don't know it, God has our bodies designed to all of a sudden increase our blood pressure, which sends more blood to our muscles, which also sends more enlightenment. Our, our brain actually is on a higher level of activity. Our ears our hearing is better, our eyes, our seeing is better, and to some degree, we actually get stronger. Our body is ready to either fight the situation physically, or if need be, as Jerry Seinfeld would say, put on a good pair of sneakers and get out of there. Run away. That's something that we're designed to do. And it's kind of funny for you guys, if you remember, because there is a little bit of truth to it. Remember the TV show, The Incredible Hulk? Okay, what was the Incredible Hulk uh, based upon? Remember Dr. Banner, whatever? He was studying people, and it's true that people in certain situations, like that mother, her child was trapped under a car, uh, she was able to lift the car up a little bit, and the kid got out. And there are some cases where people, I mean, there's no doubt you're stronger, okay, physically, because the adrenaline. What's adrenaline? It gets your muscles ready to do something, to fight. Okay, I'm not saying you can lift up the car and, and you know, do, but you know what? There's cases where people have done stuff. So God knows what he's doing, okay? 
like when I'm going to cross a major highway, okay, over here, and if, you know, if, if I was to cry, cross, well, can't talk tonight, if I was to cross Sunrise Highway or the Long Island Expressway, which I don't recommend, it's against the law, but if I was to do that, I would be afraid, and I would do it very cautiously. I would be looking, my ears would be engaged, my eyes, I wouldn't be looking at my cell phone and kind of skipping, okay? I would be heavily concentrated on making sure I don't die, okay? There's a funny scene from a movie, uh, Bowfinger, with Eddie Murphy and Steve Martin, where Eddie Murphy has to cross uh, a highway in California. It's a funny scene, but, uh, you know, it takes special skills to cross a raging highway. So that's fear, and fear is not bad. It makes you cautious. It's for protection, as Marion said, okay? It's for protection. But what's anxiety? Anxiety is fear of the irrational. Fear of the irrational. Example, okay? To lay in your bed and not sleep at night because you think there's a monster under your bed, that's irrational. That's anxiety. That's not fear, it's anxiety because there is no monster under your bed, okay? For you to sit at your kitchen table and constantly be going like this because you're afraid, what if an airplane crashes into my house and kills me? That's a type of anxiety because it's irrational fear. There is no present danger. Most likely, and again, is there a chance a, house, a plane can crash into your house? Sure but it's probably like a 1% chance out of 100. But how many people live in a state of anxiety of things that most of the time are never going to happen? They're completely irrational, okay? You know, being afraid of sitting in an airplane every time you fly that it's going to crash is, is, is irrational, that's anxiety. Now, yeah, planes do crash, but what are the odds? They're not too good that you're gonna crash. Most planes every single day are taking off and landing all across the world. I mean, the ratio of big major crashes and people who survive are vastly different, but we have anxiety of sitting on that airplane. So, anxiety, anxiety is foolish, Fear, foolish fear. So let's talk about tonight, okay, because we're getting uh, almost halfway through the show. Let's see what Dawn has. We have some comments here. Uh, Dawn says, it's happening to me when I heard my friends screaming and when I ran downstairs, how I lifted three steel doors off her foot that fell on her. I never knew that I was that filled with adrenaline that's true and and we do that you I mean moms you know you talk about the old mama bear thing you don't want to mess with a mama's children because she'll go postal on you no offense rich um, but we know that when it comes to our kids okay we're going to fight in a way it, it's not like fighting over a parking spot when someone's coming to take your child away different things are going to engage so that's what uh, what God does. That's why fear is not a bad thing. It's a good thing. It's placed there to keep us alive. But let's talk about anxiety and let's get right to those tips. I know you guys want those tips. Six tips to avoid anxiety. And guess where they're found? In a really interesting scripture in the Bible called Paul's letter to the Christians at Philippi. The book of Philippians, chapter 4, verses 8 and 9. This is a really fascinating, fascinating scripture, scriptures. And we're going to dissect them because in them we find God's truth on how are we going to face the present that we live in. Okay? And I'm going to give you one big tip even before we get there. This is a this is a bonus tip. People, I know we hear this all the time, but we don't do it. I'm telling you, it is really true because it's from God. You've got to live one day at a time. 
because God only gives us grace for today. That's why he says in the Lord's Prayer, Lord, give us this day our daily provision, what we need. All we are promised by God is to get from this morning until tonight. What happens tomorrow, we have no idea, we have no control over it to worry about, but what if this happens tomorrow? We're thinking about things that have not happened yet. They have not happened yet. And God says, if you want to live in tomorrow, you're on your own. I'm here with you today. Every day, me and my wife, we pray, Lord, we thank you that we got up. So far, we feel okay. Give us this day and take us until tonight. I know not what is going to happen tomorrow. Okay, a meteor can hit the planet and we don't have to worry about anything. They keep on telling us meteors are coming, right? So, you know, we're worrying about what's going to happen next year or next Christmas or this summer or whatever. But let's get to the six tips, okay? Let's read first Philippians 4, 8 and 9. Finally, brethren, he's speaking to believers here, okay? So this is the first. You've got to be under the umbrella of a child of God. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, one, whatsoever things are honest, two, whatsoever things are just, three, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, that's six, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things, those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do them and the God of peace will be with you. Wow, that's an interesting scripture. What the heck is Paul talking about? Well, let's look at number one, things that are true. If you're going to face today's struggles, and it's all, you know what, in, in uh, New York here, it's about 7.30 p.m., okay? Uh, we're, you know, way past half the day. So, you know what, as long as I make it to bed tonight, I could worry about tomorrow, tomorrow. But for today, what am I to think upon? And when you get up tomorrow, think upon things that are true. So what does it mean? Think and focus on things that are true. Don't focus on speculation. Gee, they say we might have this, we might have that. There might be a hurricane. We might all die next year. There might be a storm. There might be a war. Speculation. Don't focus on speculation. Don't think about the maybes. Don't live in the fantasy. Don't focus on dread and worry or things, here it is, people, that you have no control of. You have absolutely no control of over what's going to happen. Okay? We really don't. God does. We have very limited control over our environment around us. You know, it's a funny thing. Monday, yesterday, I was, you know, I, I like to keep, even on my day off, I like to keep active. And there was a bed in the front of the house. It was really cold outside, but it was all leaves and, leaves and weeds and a mess, and it was driving me crazy. And I got out there and I ripped that thing and I cleaned it and I made it look beautiful. And I told my wife, you know what? I can't control what's going on in this world. I can't control anything in my life, but I could control that flower bed. And darn it all, I'm going to do something about it because there's other things that I just can't do. People find something in your little realm to focus on and be in control of that because it'll give you a little bit of peace. But the things that I have no control over what's happening in China. I have no control over what's happening in Washington, D.C. I have no control over what's happening in New York or California. I have no control over it. And if those things control me, then they're in control. Okay? If the things that you are so afraid of that bring you to a place of panic and anxiety then you are no longer in control, but those things control you, which means you're out of control, and that's what makes you get so anxious. Number two, okay, number two, honest. Think upon those things that are honest. Focus on good things, holy things, uplifting things, godly things. 
the promises of God. Think about the history of humanity, that humanity has made it through horrific times. The sun always shines after the storm, always. Doesn't mean we're not going to go through the storm, but it does shine. Focus on what God says. What does he say? I will never leave you or forsake you, no matter what you have to face. Here's a great scripture. Isaiah 42, excuse me, uh, 43 verse 2 and 3. Uh, if you want to write that down, I would definitely write this scripture down. Isaiah 43, 2. Notice the prophet says, when, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. God will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. What does it mean? You might have to go through the waters. You might have to go through raging rivers, but they will not destroy you. They will not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you might have to walk through fires. Thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I, the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, are thy Savior. Now, I know for you theologians out there, yes, Isaiah is talking about Israel. Okay, but by application, it applies to those in Christ today, children of God through faith in Jesus Christ. Okay? <laughs> Thank you, Marion. <laughs> number three. Number three. Think upon things that are just, meaning focus on things that are real, that are honest. Keep in mind, people, don't forget this, that most people are liars, that Satan is the father of lies, and many people live to put fears in our hearts to control us. Fear is a tool to control. And we might say, gee, would anybody really do that purposely? Well, all throughout history, people have in order to control the masses. Remember this, that God is right and true. Think upon him. And humans are prone to exaggerate, right? You know we all exaggerate. Man, I saw this accident up there. It was like fire trucks were everywhere. It was like insane. Fire trucks were everywhere, really? Okay. Don't we always exaggerate every time? You know, it's, it's, we tend to do this. We tend to make things, you know, I went up to 7-Eleven, I got a cup of coffee, and this guy was arguing with somebody else. By the time we get back from 7-Eleven, man, you should have seen him. Man, it was a crazy at 7-Eleven. The guy was screaming and pushing. It was insane. It was a madhouse. <laughs> it's a Seinfeld quote there. Okay. Number four. Hey, Laura, how you doing? Good to see you. Okay, think upon things that are pure. Notice, everything we talk about tonight, God is telling us we have to make an active choice to think upon what we're going to think upon. Because what you think upon and what you choose will be what gets you through the day. What's going to bring you to the other side? Because you know what? I'm going to surprise you people. You know what? There are people who live in the United States, it depends on where you are, who are living normal lives. I have a friend who lives in South Carolina. He's not living like we are in panic in New York. He's going to car shows. He's decorating his house for Christmas. I don't know. Some people live, you go to Florida, you go to Texas. Some people live in a completely different world. It depends on what news you're getting, okay? And what fear-mongering is going on? Now, I'm not saying everything we hear is a lie. I'm not saying that. There are things that are true, things that are dangerous. We stay away. We listen. But we always have to think, what's really the ultimate truth? What God's Word says. If man might be telling me the truth or might be exaggerating, I don't know. But I do know that God is always true. The Bible says, let God be true and every man a liar. Okay, number four, think upon things that are pure. That are pure. Jen, she's living in Florida. She's living life. Live your life, people. Okay, think upon things that are pure. 
What does God mean? Think upon pure and goodness. Don't think, people, this is important. Don't think you can sit in front of the TV or your phone or the internet and watch trash on TV and still have the blessing peace of God in your heart. You can't do it. You can't watch perverted, horrible stuff. No, we all sit there. We watch all these occult, this wicked, evil, perverted, anti-God TV shows, anti-God movies, all wicked and evilness. And at the same time, we're telling God, you know, uh, you God, why am I so anxious for? Why I'm, don't expect the peace of God to swallow you and follow you if you will. We're taking in people, trash in, trash out. What are we watching? What are we filling ourselves with? Watching evil, wicked things is the quickest way to push the peace of God right out of you. Because where sin is, in, you know, when that comes in, sin comes in. Where sin comes in, peace goes out. There'll be no peace. And the enemy gets a foothold. The enemy gets a foothold. Also, don't think on this same note here, okay? She's watching. <laughs> Marion says, watch the cooking channel. That's great. And baking channel. Watch Hallmark movies, okay? Amen. Amen. <laughs> okay, also, and this is on the same note here, don't think impure thoughts. Think about it. Hey, people, I stay in tune to this because I'm in the mental health field. People that are old, being on drugs is over the top. There are so many people who are going back to drugs, going back to drinking, they're going back to anything because they can't take it. So what does God's word says? As a man or a woman thinks in his mind, so he is. So don't think, gee man, I'm really freaking out right now. What I really need right now is to get wasted. That's what I need. I need to get drunk. Just wash this whole thing away. I need to have sex with someone who I'm not married to. That's what I need. I need a quick fix and I'll be fine. Maybe, I, you know what, I just need to kill myself. I just need to kill myself. I need to get even. That's what I need to do. I'm so ticked off about what's going on. I, I need to hate those who are doing better than me and who are not sick. Why aren't they sick and I'm sick? Why did I have somebody who got sick? Or to think upon and hate those in, who are in power or authority over us. I know we like to get, you know, we want to blame everyone, and I'm not going to get, I'm not even going to touch this with a 10-foot pole, but pushing hatred onto people and say, it's because of them, them, them that we're here. It might be so, but that's not of God. It's not of God, okay? It's not of God. Number five, think upon things that are lovely. Now, interesting note here about this word lovely in the Greek. It is used only one time in the entire New Testament. And what it means, lovely is really a bad translation. It means pleasing and orderly to God. So it says, think upon things that are pleasing and orderly to God. Remember, people, and I'm going to, this is an important one. Confusion is our worst enemy. Confusion breeds anxiety. Confusion steals peace. In Job chapter 10, verse 15, it says, If I be wicked, woe unto me. And if I be righteous, yet will I not lift up my head. I am full of confusion. Therefore, see thou mine aff affliction. In 1 Corinthians 14, 33, for God, and you know I use this a lot, it, but this is an important scripture, people. You've got to remember this. For God is not the author. He is not the originator or the beginner or maker of confusion but of peace as in all the churches of the saints what does that mean in james 1 8 
a double-minded man or woman is unstable in all of their ways. People, confusion is when you hear one thing here and one thing there. You know it's true. If you go through the radio or whatever TV shows you list, depending on what news station you hear, if you listen to one news station, you're going to feel, oh, it's the end. You're going to listen to another news station, hey, it doesn't sound that bad. And what happens? You walk away and say, I don't know who to believe. I am in confusion. Today I felt a little happy because I heard this good news. Then I heard bad news, and then I feel devastated. I am basing my peace on what people are saying, either true or false, up or down. And God says, that's not from God. If you're confused, how many people out there, okay? And I have to say, over the last, I mean, I've been going through it. I've really been saying, God, I'm confused about this. I'm confused about that. Whenever I am confused, whenever I am confused, I am in fear and anxiety. When I don't know what I'm supposed to do. The other day, and I tell you people, you say, does God really talk to you? Does God really answer prayers? Yes, he does. And I had a very, very important prayer that I was asking God for a while. And I wasn't getting an answer. And I was trying to get the answer on myself to get my own peace. So I was watching the news trying to, you know, well, according to this report, this is what I should do. According to that report, that's what I should do. And I was in so much anxiety because I was, and I said, God, I am so confused. I said, God, you've got to give me an answer. I just want to know what you want me to do, God. Just tell me what to do and I'll do it. It's not so much I'm afraid of A or B. I'm just afraid of doing the wrong thing in your eyes. And I tell you, God gave me an answer the other day. And I spent hours just seeking and seeking. And by the time I came home from my drive, I've been driving a lot lately. I'm driving around Long Island. I'm just driving looking for answers and God gave me so much peace and it was clear as day this is what you need to do and I know it was from God and I'm gonna stick with it people confusion causes fear which causes anxiety which is never from God so and this is and you, you know this is true the news brings confusion. Stop listening to it. I tell you, you will be so much, because really, as, if you think about it, if you sit, and I know people, they're just at the TV, at the news, pinned to it all day long, watching the ticket tape go by there, the latest reports, this, that. I remember when COVID came out in 2020. You know what it was like? People, did you knowing what was going on change anything? Did it change anything? about you no I'm not saying don't stay in the loop but darn it don't listen to it every single minute of the day shut it off and go outside and decorate your house do whatever you got to do and when the boogeyman comes to get you well God will meet him there you know and I and I keep on sharing from that movie faith like potatoes if I'm forced to drink of that cup I'll drink it when it's given to me. Until that time, I'm going to do what I have to do and I'm going to live. Okay, and if God wants me to drink of that cup, he'll give me the grace to drink of that cup when that day comes. But until that day, I'm going to live. And I'm going to live in peace because only God brings peace. Shut off the news. I'm telling you, it's going to kill you. It's going to kill you. Did you realize something? This is interesting, okay? There is never one time in the Word of God where God ever said in any situation, okay, people, it's time to panic. Everybody needs to run outside and go, ah, and run down the street. There's never a time where God says, panic. Get crazy and just start pulling your hair and run around in a circle and throw yourself into the wall. Set yourself on fire. God is the God of order. Chaos 
is from the other guy. The other guy likes chaos. God is a God of order. If you run around in panic, you are running around in confusion, which is going to lead to chaos. Number six, think upon these things. A good report. Interesting that God uses those words. Listen to good reports. Think and meditate on good things, on good news. I don't know if you guys notice every day, okay, and when COVID first came out, I, I put out good news alerts about COVID every day for the whole year, and now I'm starting, uh, if you follow me on social media, I give good news of the day. I look around and I find good things that are happening. There's people, good things are happening all the time. Good things are happening. Think upon good news. Think upon good words. Think upon truthful people. For what you focus on is what you will become. I'm going to say that again. What you focus on is what you will become. Do you want to be insane with fear and anxiety? Or do you want to trust? What does the Lord say? When you see these things, no. The hour is near. If you're a child of God, that's a good thing. You need to be excited that God says what's going to happen. He pegs it every time. He knows the future. He tells us about these things. And he says, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. For greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Let's go back and, let, and let's look at the results. So I gave you six tips. Let's read them again in Philippians 4.8. And listen to how the Apostle Paul says this. Finally, okay, he uses the word finally as in this is a finished thought. We need to think no further. Finally, brethren, those who are children of God do faith in Jesus Christ. You have confessed your sins. You've come to Christ. You know him as Lord and Savior now. You've left religion and its lies, and you've left all the cares and the ways of this world, and you've trusted in Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. And the result, those things which you have both learned and received and heard. People, tonight, you learned, you heard. If you received, it's up to you. Did you receive them? If you have heard them and you, and Paul says, you've seen me not just talk these things, I've lived them. If you follow them, the God of peace, he is the God of personal peace, the peace that passes understanding, that the world can be on fire and you can be sitting on your front porch in a rocking chair, praising God because you're okay with your creator. God promises to be with you. Peace will be the power that gets you through the world we live in. It isn't a world without problems. It isn't a world without fear. It's a world without anxiety. People, I hope this speaks to you. And when I get fearful and anxious, I hope you guys remind me of it. Because this is something that we don't just listen to once and we tuck it away and say, great, Pastor, that was a good thing. And then, you know, as soon as the the show or the lesson is over, we go put on the news and we sit there and get into panic mode. It's all for naught. It's all for nothing. You need to think upon these things. And I think it's, it's great, these scriptures here. What's really true? God's true. I don't know about man. Who's really honest? God is. Not so sure about man. What's just and right? God is. It's going to think about him. What's pure? God is. What's lovely, orderly, and decent, as God has said? What's good news? What's the good news? God says, think upon those six things. 
And the promise is the God of peace is going to be with you. You need that. You need it every minute because you won't make it. You're not going to make it. I'm not going to make it. And the enemy is trying to rip us right from the foot of the cross. But we've got to hang on to that cross because that cross is everything. The world centers around the cross. And if you're not hanging on to it, you're getting dragged away. It's our choice, people. It's our choice what we're going to do. Any last words as we close out tonight? I know I get a little heavy with you guys, but I know, you know, I look at this sometimes as, you know, group counseling. You know, we need to really, you know, talk to one another, encourage one another. When one is down, you be the one who's up because one day you'll be down and you'll need the other person who's up to lift you up. Encourage one another. Be someone who encourages because there's nothing impossible. Nothing is over until God says it's over. And God is saying the show is over tonight. <laughs> we hear the song. People, thank you so much for joining us. If you like this episode, uh, yeah, and don't be, a, uh, please don't forget to, uh, you can lower that a little bit. Don't forget to uh, hit the subscribe button on our page. Thumbs up if you liked what we did. And share, this is a good one to share. Copy and paste this uh, once it gets up on YouTube. After we're gonna, We edit out all the trivia and all that nonsense in the beginning. And then send it to your friends. I'm sure it's not hard to find someone out there who's struggling with anxiety. Maybe it's you. Thank you all, and God bless. We'll see you next time on Life Talk Live.